This modest farm museum is in the middle of nowhere, but it is surprisingly full of some pretty cool antiques. While these people probably had really hard, miserable lives, they actually looked doer because they had to hold the same look for over 10 minutes to expose these photographs. These horse-drawn carriages date from the 19th century. It would have sucked to have to ride in one in the dead of winter. <laughs> Rainy days wouldn't have been a lot of fun either. Costly rubber tires didn't catch on until the early 20th century, so you could expect a bouncy, bouncy ride. The, the seat filled with hay looks kind of comfortable. This seat, however, does not look comfortable. It's not ergonomic, and my back hurts just looking at it. I have no idea what kind of vehicle this is. Is, is it a bike? Is it a wheelchair maybe or an asylum torture device uh, maybe all three a bicycle wheelchair and torture device all rolled into one <laughs> and this is a wheelchair made out of a hard wooden kitchen chair well it's better than wobbling around on those horrible victorian crutches which inexplicably are still offered in european hospitals today the wheelchair might be okay, if you were paralyzed from the neck down. Feeding yourself back then was a full-time job, though it actually makes me nostalgic for time when we made home-cooked meals. And that, kids, is called a radio. That was your entertainment. That's it. No internet, no video games. That and burning witches at the stake. This is for giving injections to large animals, but I've seen some for humans this big. Ouch! Oh, and if you want to know how old someone is, take a look at their arm and see if they have a smallpox vaccination scar. Due to crappy, no budget filmmaking, the sound did not come out on this take. What he's saying is, you spin that around there with the honeycomb. Yeah, right there, put the honeycomb in there. And you spin it around a couple times and then uh, boom, there comes the honey right out of that thing right there. It's a good thing most people were too poor to afford more than a couple of outfits because this is how they had to wash their clothes. It was tedious. Many clothes and fingers were lost in the machine. It's still better than beating your clothes on a rock. And this is where the English idiom put through the ringer came from. It's not really clear why this bed is so short. Either people put their toddlers on here and they rolled off and broke their heads, or people were just really short, or they were just ignorant and thought that if you slept lying down, your liquids would mix in your body and you'd die. They were wrong. Oh, look at the adorable little baby carriage. This is much cuter than baby carriages today. Oh, and there's the baby's cradle, most likely made with lead paint. And this is how people made coffee before there were Starbucks. Thankfully, this is the way some people still make their coffee. They roast the beans, and then they grind them fresh. Mmm, mmm, fresh, fresh coffee. Yum. He's saying this is how they press the butter. After churning it, of course, first by hand and later when they had manual cranks. And this is where the butter was before it made it to the package press. And then it's transferred after it's pressed to the cart and delivered on this bicycle with the milk. Aww. This is an early planting machine pulled by your beast of burden of choice. I would think that by the time you finally got done planting, the season would be over. It's no wonder people starved. Oh, this is actually the type of lawnmower that my family used to mow our grass when I was a kid. It's kind of sad when everything from your childhood is now in a museum. And this is a horse-drawn fire engine. 
Yes, many a house and building burned while trying to put out fires with it. And he's saying, well, this year tank, back during the war times, you didn't need no fuel to run it because you could run it on this year's stuff. It's called wood. And that, that was a lot easier because there was a big shortage during the war of fuel. But that, that's how you run it. This beautiful and ornate horse-drawn carriage is a hearse used to deliver the dead to the church cemetery. This place is a hoarder's paradise. We've got lots of tractors coming up. Scholars are divided on where skiing originated. Some say it developed in the Altai Mountains in China from 8000 BC. Some say Russia after finding a ski from 6000 BC. We do know for sure that Scandinavians have been skiing for 5000 years. They're not for fun like we do today, but as a practical means of transportation and for hunting. He's 6 feet 2 inches tall, or 188 centimeters, so you can see that skis have varied in length throughout history. I have these exact shoes and cross-country skis, and I'm still using them. Well, not these. These are really old. But yeah, the ones from 40 or 50 years ago are actually still a lot of fun. You better have some really good balancing skills to ride this bike. This was DDT for home use. Yes, you heard me right, DDT for home use. These are real Stone Age tools. We were pretty smart apes, even back then. They made attacking nearby tribes and bludgeoning each other to death so much easier. Hey kids, these are called film cameras. This is how people took pictures before digital. This is a fairly modern harvester. Some are even in use today. The blacksmith. This is how people make stuff out of metal right here with some fire and extreme heat. 